What's going on YouTube? Flamesford here today, joined by Saper, Zach Weigel, owner or starter of Gamers Outreach, the one I went through, uh, the organization I went through to uh, shave my beard so we could build the gaming carts. That is what we are doing today. We are going to Lurie's, right? Lurie's Lurie's Children's Hospital. I keep saying Lures. Lurie. Lurie. Lures, because it's like a Portuguese word that my mom says, Maybe Lures. Their, their last name could be Portuguese. That is possible. So we're going to Lurie's Children's Hospital to drop off the first gaming cart. The other one's going to New Jersey, back hometown for me. But we are doing the Chicago one today in New Jersey at a later time. We're going to go make the kids' days. It's going to be awesome. I don't know if we'll be able to record the kids, uh, just because uh, we might need their consent. But we're going to show you the gaming cart, the location it is in, and uh, just take you throughout our day. For all those who didn't watch the stream, and uh, watch me lose my beard and your great explanations of Gamers Outreach of this amazing thing you have started. Give them a little uh, fill-in on uh, exactly everything you all do. Yeah, totally. So, uh, Gamers Outreach, we are a uh, charity organization within the video game industry and we provide therapy and recreation to children in hospitals through interactive entertainment. So, very specifically, we actually build uh, these portable video game carts, which we're going to deliver right now to Lurie Children's Hospital. And uh, the carts are basically um, medical carts that have been outfitted for video games. So the idea is that if you're stuck in bed or you've had a really big surgery, nurses can wheel these carts around and they can give kids access to video games when they wouldn't normally be able to do anything outside of their room. So right now we're driving to downtown Chicago. Flame Sword was able to, uh, to build one of these things and uh, this is the first of two that we'll be delivering on behalf of the, the Optic Beard. We also sometimes just give games to hospitals as well. We just delivered 300 Xbox 360 consoles to Mott Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor. But uh, these gaming carts are kind of the main thing that we do. So we're, uh, we're building them right now and uh, it's gonna be a good time. We're gonna get to see um, a lot of happy kids, um, a lot of happy staff members who've been able to use a cart um, that we actually delivered to this facility a little while ago. And um, yeah, it should be, it's a good day. These are the best days, these are my favorite days. To, uh, to deliver this so it'll be a good time. These are my favorite days, I mean, I would never back in the day believe if like you told me, if you went back 10 years ago and said like from all the things that, from competitive gaming, if, if you were to tell me that I'd do all these things that I do now, I probably wouldn't believe you because my mom would be like, no, nah, you're crazy. Right, right. This is what I told my mom 10 years ago, like, mom, I'm gonna make it with competitive gaming. I'm gonna do amazing things. And she didn't believe me and now we are here we are crushing it. We are going to drop this cart off. It's going to be an amazing day. The cool thing about this cart that the Optic Beer community is delivering is that we know it's going to last for a long time. So the cool thing about these carts is that um, they're basically tanks. I mean, once you install it into the hospital, <laughs> that thing is not going anywhere. <laughs> we delivered our very first two carts uh, to a hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan back in 2009. And they're still there, they're still working, they're still used on a daily basis. Um, and so that's what's cool is, you know, you could simply give like an Xbox to a hospital, but the problem with that is, you know, it's only a matter of time before uh, it gets lost or misplaced or, you know, just becomes really difficult for nurses to move that around. So these cards are really kind of like a tool for the child life specialist and for the, the nurses to use to enable, you know, activities to be sort of more mobile. So, I mean, actually, at any time, you know, once this thing is delivered, you could probably just call the hospital up and come see it if you wanted to. Come game myself. Yeah, yeah. My, my gaming setup's down for the day. I gotta go uh, use yours all. Yeah, we gotta <laughs> A lot of you all have actually been tweeting at me and uh, asking me how to, you know, get involved yourselves in building these gaming cards. And uh, Zach and Gamers Outreach is actually coming out with some new uh, gaming or new tools on their website that are going to allow you to do those. I'm going to let him explain all that once again because he is the one of the minds behind the master plan over at Gamers Outreach. Yeah, so uh, to Mike's point, we're actually in the process right now of building a new website. So as of this video, hopefully it'll be done in like two to three months. And um, the reason for that is everything we have online right now was kind of created in 2009. And it was sort of before we really started delivering these cards frequently and um, just as an organization, we were a little different. So we've got uh, this new site coming out. People are gonna be able to kind of uh, start fundraisers really easily. So if you're somebody who streams on your own and you feel like uh, you know there's a hospital in your backyard that you'd like to support and build a cart for, you're gonna be able to do that through the new gamersoutreach.org website. It's all stuff we're kind of working on right now. And uh, yeah, a lot of it's kind of just been pioneered by people like Flamesword, because uh, that's stuff that we wouldn't really have ever thought to do uh, had it not been for people like him, uh, you know, kind of undertaking the effort to, to build these for, for hospitals of their choosing. 
Oh, you two kinds, Zach. You two kinds, Zach. So we are almost here. Or I don't know if we're almost we here. Are, but uh, coming but into we, down, we are in downtown Shy City. So let's enjoy this view. Shy City, Maine. Our dude Zach is going to go into Dunkin' Donuts here to get some donuts for uh, the nurses. You know, we're going to be kind. But your boy's going to be on that health grind. He ain't going to eat them at all. At all. If it was Krispy Kremes, I might have had one or two. No. But Dunkin' Donuts, no, I'm passing. No. Zach, how many are you going to have? Uh, I'm probably going to have three. Three? Ooh. This is why I'll never be in this good shape. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing. So we came it's Troopers. We, deci we decided to walk to Dunkin' Donuts since we were only 24 miles away. There is the Children's Hospital. So we heading inside there, right there. We are just come in, Lori Children's Hospital in Chicago. We're going upstairs. We have to get some ID badges. Because obviously they're not going to let anybody have fly into the That's hospital. Right. They're not supposed to be here. And this ID badge is not going to have my optic gear on it. Unfortunately. you through old school flame shorts is awesome. We're going to see the optic beard on one of these a, cars. There's a giant whale behind you. That's kind of cool. Two whales. Two whales. So we're going to come over here and we're going to actually just wait. Uh, we got to have somebody come get us. Sweet. know what a child life specialist is, but we work with... Go ahead and speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, our job in the hospital is to help kids cope with being here. Um, so you can, how, as pretty obvious, but children are a little different than adults and developmentally they understand things differently. So our job is to help them understand why they're in the hospital, answer any questions they have normalize the environment. And one big way that we normalize the environment is through play and activities. So we have tons and tons of patients that want to play video games, right? Um, and so as you can tell, these are a hot commodity, especially for patients who um, are on isolation, meaning they can't leave their room and come down here, or kids who need to remain in their bed um, for certain physical reasons at the time. Um, the other great thing with it being on a television by itself is that we can wheel it closer to them. Um, and for them to be able to see the screen a little better sometimes. And then the parents then can watch TV or something else in the room and they can be gaming. So it's, it's awesome. Um, As you see, it moves up and down yeah. so we can meet them at their level too, depending on where their bed is. Yeah, so that's a absolutely. Nice, nice feature of this uh, that other people have. Yeah. Um, when I that's brought cool. the Xbox 360 to the very first patient when we got it in the PICU, he was like, this made my whole day. <laughs> and the mom awesome. just like couldn't stop thanking me. And, you know, because a lot of times it's hard because now technology is such a huge thing, and so we have to stay up on the times, meaning up on the video games, the video game systems, and so they're very, very well received and used all the time. That's amazing. Now, you guys have been using the last one we delivered all the, the time. Last eight months. All the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is there a waiting list every day? Do you, how do you ration it out? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll say usually like an hour um, per patient, and then we'll just keep a running list and just have volunteers <clears throat> or ourselves run up and keep like clean it out from one room, take it to the next room, they get it an hour, they clean it out the next room. Um, and it, it stays consistent and goes to every inpatient floor. That's awesome. Um, and one thing with the ICU, the reason why it's going to be so helpful is those patients cannot leave the floor without medical team approval, mm -hmm. which is very, very rare. Yeah. So they can't come down here and play on our systems that are hooked up to these televisions. Um, and so that's why we found through we check in, check out the other system. And a lot of times it was going to ICU patients. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we felt like this one would be best just to be housed up there. Cool. Um, which we're really excited about. It's sort of validating to hear you say that from our perspective yeah. because the way we started this program, so I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yeah. And back in like, oh, what? What? Yeah, my children's hospital. Oh, great, okay. So we, um, originally I was just hosting video game tournaments and we were started donating um, to the different charity causes that we thought were cool. Yeah. And we thought it'd be fun to give Ma a bunch of video games, but we went, when we went over to their hospital, we noticed like all the games were kind of aggregating in playrooms. Yeah. <laughs> which like, on one hand is great, as you know, because like right. the kids, it's like an incentive for them to get out of their rooms, right, like right, socialize right. with the other kids. But then there are all these, you know, sort of other cases in the hospital where maybe you're going through dialysis or maybe right. you've had like major surgery. Right. And there wasn't an easy way for us to be able yeah. to like get those games out of the playroom into the room, and then it's like when you do get them out of the room, all the kids jump and like, "Where's the Xbox?" Like, I'm sorry, someone else is using it. You yeah. can play with the Legos, you know. Right. Um, right. So we ended up like finding a medical company that helped us sort of re-engineer something we already created, so we could like use the facility video it's games. Awesome. Yeah, but it was actually for the exact reason. Like some hospitals, you know, like the cart goes everywhere. You know, it's in right. the playrooms and it's in like intensive care units, but. 
Um, and we had specifically in mind, like this is kind of for exactly. the bedside environment. Right. Yeah. Right. We're a 40 bed unit, so you can imagine. Yeah, I mean, there's a that's lot. Just, and that's just one unit. Yeah. So I think the fact that we can have our own, it would, it will be going around all the time, I'm sure. Depending on whatever situation like a child might be in, you know, child by specialist and nurses can kind of easily, you know, move the cart up and down. Um, the monitor, it gets pretty tall. The monitor is also on a, a full swivel, so if you wanted to, I'm actually also glad to hear you mentioned the bedside thing because mm -hmm. that was one thing I was like, if I was in bed, I want I want the thing like right in my face, you know, totally. so I can yep. point. Um, so you can fully, you can actually move the monitor all the way around 180 degrees, um, just kind of depending on you know, whatever the situation might be. So <laughs> yeah. let them game. Yeah, let the guys game. Daniel wants to go in. So my, you might have to. Uh, Rayman is installed right now, and then, uh, yeah, you can try, you can try, I tried installing it yesterday, and, uh, so there's no, you could just put that disc right in. Oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> With the Xbox One, do you have to install the games before you play them? Um, you do, don't you? I tried yeah. installing Minecraft the other day, and it was like, it couldn't install because of the internet. Yeah, I have to um, take the update. Is that probably? That's probably the one. So, oh, that's good to know, so I should put all those in before I take it? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. So Daniel, actually Rayman is one of the only games right now, and we have to still install Minecraft and uh, some of the others. But if you want to dive into Rayman, uh, you're probably going to try it out. That's one of my favorite games. Classic. <laughs> Such a good one. Yeah, normally it's, it's good to already connect into the internet at least once and pull an update and then, and okay. then just install all the games right off the disk. And then I don't have to use the disk anymore. Yeah, they just have to, you, you need you the, still, I still yeah. need the disk. Okay. <clears throat> they just run faster if they're, if they're able to install all right, first. Okay. Like you can jump in too, man. I don't know if there's a... <laughs> I'll coach. Of course, I'm going to use I'm going to help with the coach and his needs. The other thing that I think that video games do that we, is really important too is it gives kids the opportunity to educate staff and feel in control, which doesn't happen in the hospital a lot because kids often feel out of control. So we've had staff that'll come in and like, what, like tell the, you teach me how to play, and then mm -hmm. they have like these like battles, with kids, <laughs> which is really cool because a lot of times kids don't feel that yeah, in yeah, the yeah. hospital. Um, That's at the point they really know and they like have mastered, and it's really cool. That's at the point where they say, I get to play more than an hour now because winter stays out. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Just left the children's hospital. It was incredible. Zach has already seen this stuff, and uh, for me to see it for the first time on hands, I thought it was incredible. The, uh, the two kids loved it. Daniel was going hard in Rayman. I should have probably recorded a little bit more of him dominating, but uh, I let him do his thing since there were already a lot of cameras on him, so I just let him game. But it, it was incredible. The hospital itself, the Lurie's uh, hospital, is just incredible. It is a 100% don donation based. Funded by donations. Funded by donations, and everything in the hospital is incredible. I would have recorded it all, but there were you know a lot of people, so I, I don't want to catch any children that didn't want to be on camera and all that and make anyone feel uncomfortable but we got the whole tour and it was incredible i'm going to try to definitely try to you know send some more games out this way that are you know children friendly it does seem that there are some people who play mature games which is pretty cool some people were talking we about keep all the good games in there so um in a, in a little, little yeah, black in, box in the back room <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so it was great all we we're going to get some food and then head back to the optic house and back in the house all, as you can see there's a land going down, it's crazy. I used to be part of lands back in the land network days all the time, so I know how crazy team houses and land houses get when it does happen. I hope you all enjoy the day you have giving back. You were all, you know, mainly the reasons behind us being able to raise that much money for the gaming cards for the hospitals. That was the first one that we get to deliver. When I do drop the jersey one off, I will also make a day in the life video of that because that one's going to be pretty cool because I'm going to be able to invite my family out to come see it and I'm going to have a bunch of family support behind it, which is going to be awesome. So thank you guys all once again for helping me do that. That thing 
was definitely one of the best feelings of my life knowing that I was able to help those kids. Thank you once again. All I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. And as always, this is your boy Flamesword. I'll see you guys later. Peace.